this method, we'll call it a modified Hugel culture method, really works. Guten yarning, everybody. What we have in front of me is about 25 square feet of prime gardening space, and we're using it right now for these five compost bins. The problem is, if we just use them as compost bins, we're taking up a pretty large percentage of our overall growing area if we look at what we have here on our property. So we don't want to just compost in these bins. We've had success also gardening here. And we first installed these compost bins three years ago, and after that first year, we had a couple of plants volunteer. We had some butternut squash that produced over 80 pounds of butternut squash from two plants and then we had some tomatoes volunteer as well well after seeing that success that first year we decided to intentionally plant in our compost bins last year because we had seen some great success and we were not at all disappointed in the results we planted eggplant peppers tomatoes and we harvested so much out of these bins so this year while the compost is happening below we're going to prep all of our remaining beds for planting. We don't want to waste a single bit of space. And so I'm going to show you how this process works, how the buildup works. Now, this is from our own personal experience, and we're not saying that there's a specific recipe for success, but what we are saying is we've witnessed the success and we want to build on that. Now, one of the nice things about bins like this is there is the ability to remove the exterior so we can scrape out the compost that's happening inside. And so you can see this one's a little bit dry, but you can see some really nice composted material going in in here. So we can pull out from the bottom and continue to load at the top. And even the compost that's down at the bottom hasn't finished composting yet. So it's still working through that process. And one of the things we know is that when composting is happening, there's a lot of nitrogen being used up. And so as we start adding layers to our bed here, we're also gonna add some blood meal so that we can keep that nitrogen down in the lower level so it's not leaching it down from our top level. And you can see from one of the beds that we've already filled in here at the top that we have a good amount of this nice growing medium and I'll, I'll explain that here in just a second. But again, we don't want that leaching to happen at the root level of whatever plants we put in here. And so we're gonna be really careful about making sure we have plenty of nitrogen down below as we start layering this up. Now, if I dig down in this particular bed, and take a look at what's been composting since last year. I mean, we're in pretty good shape, but you can see we've got some sticks in here. And actually, look, that stick just falling apart like so. I mean, it's really getting to a point. Oh, look at that. Look how healthy that is. Really nice worm in here, multiple worms in here. I mean, the environment that's in here is really conducive to breaking everything down. And it reminds me in some ways, you know, based on the different layers and the different ingredients that we have in here, of a kind of hugel culture setup you know the hugel culture setup is typically a mounded setup with your sticks at the bottom and then multiple layers including grass and compost etc going upwards that creates a bed that usually lasts for about four or five years before it has to be replaced in many ways this is similar we have our woody structures toward the bottom we have some layers of grass we have other compost in here we have spent soil that we're putting in here. So we've got a lot of those similarities. If you have any experience with hugel culture, we'd love to know what that experience has been like for you. So one of the first things I'm gonna to add to this compost bin, this is some old, already starting to break down mulch. This is all natural mulch. There's no coloring or anything like that. This is just mulch mixed with some soil. So this is our woody content that we're gonna be adding toward the bottom. So I'm gonna put some of this in there. And at the same time, I have an excess of this kind of fibrous material here in this bin. So I'm gonna split this between the two. By the way, does anybody know what this is? If you know what it is, leave us a comment and let us know. I'm not gonna spoil it here. But what did this come from? One of the nice things about composting this way and also being able to grow in here is I got all this organic material left over from last year's garden and none of it goes to waste. I'm not even going to bother cutting it down because this is going to be under a layer. It'll break down really quickly. If you want it to break down faster, you can definitely cut it into smaller pieces. So I've got that material in here and now I'm adding some of this old mulch. By the way, this is pine bark mulch. So now we've got a nice woody layer across but I 
still have a bunch of space to fill up. But before I do that, I'm gonna start adding some of this blood meal in here. This is a 12% by weight nitrogen supplement. And so I'm gonna add the blood meal at a couple points throughout this. So again, we're not getting any leaching from our surface area. That's the last thing we wanna do is have all of our nitrogen pulled out of there and we end up not being able to get any good vegetables out of here. So we've got our bottom layer. Now on a standard Hugelhalter setup, the next layer is probably going to be something like grass. But in this case, what we have is the remains of the spinach plants and the radish plants that we pulled up. And then we used the lawnmower to chop into fine bits so that it would compost easily. So we have this. We also will have some grass for one of the other bins here. But for now, I'm going to use about half of that nice material that we have here. Again, nothing goes to waste. So we, we use the plants in our compost just like we use the rest of it to eat, to freeze, you know, everything for later. So we've got a nice couple of layers in here and we're gonna cover this up now with a layer of leaves. We've actually had these oak leaves for a couple of years. In some part, they're already starting to break down, but we put them in occasionally. It's just a nice big bag of leaves to have and it's going to be doing its own kind of breaking down already. But again, take a look at that. Perfect dried out leaves. No disease in here. No insects. They've been around for a couple of years, so we're not worried about any insects hiding in here. And I'm going to add one more little bit here of the blood meal. Because we're about to add the top layer, which is going to be our main growing medium where all of our roots are going to be. And so I don't want to get the blood meal too high. I don't want too much nitrogen up there. So let's go ahead and take a look at that top layer. Now the next layer in the hugel culture setup is typically going to be some sort of coarse compost, but I actually have some native soil from here left over from when we dug up our front yard and space to prepare that. So I'm going to create a layer of this native soil. And our native soil is actually pretty clay, which is sometimes difficult to work with, but it also means it's also often typically high in nutrient content. How about an unexpected find? here in the soil. It's a little dime. It looks like I'm getting paid to garden. So I only added, I would say, maybe an inch of this native soil because I don't want this to get too compacted uh, or too dense. But this next part I'm really excited about because I see this question asked quite often and that is, I have all of this soil that I grew in last year. What can I do with it? Well, this is a great opportunity to use some of that spent soil, put it back into your compost, and grow again. Because as this process happens, it's going to help replenish the soil that you're putting in on top. So this is going to be our final layer, really nice layer here, I would say. It's got a really good consistency, and this spent soil, it's nice and aerated, it is well draining, we're not going to have any problem with that. It also holds moisture nicely, and that's one of the things your compost needs. It needs to be watered every once in a while. We should end up with about five inches or so of a nice mix for us to put our plants in. All right, I've gone ahead and I've finished these two, and so that means we have four containers now to plant in. The fifth one, we've already planted something in. So four new containers, four new beds to plant in. And if I come in real close here and dig in, you can see we've got five plus inches of really nice medium to plant in, which will be perfect for the roots of the vegetables we're gonna plant. And what we're putting in these two bins, well, we've got a really nice selection here of fruits and vegetables. Now along the back where we can trellis them, we're gonna grow a couple of these sugar baby melons, really nice sweet melon that doesn't get too big. And along the front, we're gonna plant some of these sweet peppers. Now all the peppers we've planted so far this year were sweet peppers, and you can see these, even though they're in these small containers, these are getting ready to flower. And then to fill in some of the space that we have here, some extra space, we are going to plant some of this basil, which is looking really nice right now. And we're gonna plant some of this really nice looking celery. Now, this celery has quite a few stalks in here, so we have to separate it out a little bit as we plant it. All right, we've got everything we wanted planted in these two bins. We've got seven plants per, so we're taking advantage of every little bit of space that we have. And we could go back and add more if needed later on. 
Now, as I look down this line, I see 25 square feet of space that otherwise would not have been used for growing vegetables. And I know for a fact that we've had great success in here, whether it's just a couple of butternut squash plants producing over 80 pounds of butternut squash, our tomatoes, our summer squash, our peppers and eggplants. We know that there are quite a variety of vegetables that work well in this method and we're expecting to see some great results. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe. And most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.